week's video is going to be about making something that I don't know that I've talked about before, and that is something I call smittens. Smittens are just little fingerless gloves, and you're probably familiar with these. This is a pair I made a number of years ago, and it ended up that these are the ones I kept for me and have used the most. Um, these are crocheted. They're crocheted with a really bulky yarn. I used to use a lot of this yarn um, and I forget what it was called. It was a really hefty yarn and I've washed them so they have little bumps on them and stuff. Um, I've also got a picture I'll put up here somewhere of these when they before I washed them when they were new and I just made them. Um, yeah, so let's look at these for a second. I did do a little bumpy edge at the top, a little bit of decorative something. This was a variegated yarn. <clears throat> it's worked from the bottom up. Uh, it was crocheted and done in rounds. I think you can see that it one looks like I decided to um, just crochet into the back of the stitch so it left a little ridge going here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, in order to make the thumb hole, it looks like I just left some of it. It looks like I probably reversed and went the other way. I think I probably did that. So uh, these have been great. And you know, one thing I like about them is you know, I live in a uh, pretty warm climate, so it's not freezing and icy and snowy in the, in the winter here. But I can wear these over top of a pair of light gloves too. But these are good because it, they're, it's easy to drive with them. It's easy to uh, text, but not at the same time, obviously, and do other things on your phone. It's just, it leaves your fingers free to open things to write. Um, but it still gives you some warmth in your hands. And if your fingers are cold, I just kind of like, I just tuck my hands inside of them. But you're not constantly taking your gloves on and off. I'm just saying that in case you want to make a pair of these, if you haven't before. They are so fast. I, I made, I almost finished the pair. I'm going to show you um, what, last night when I was watching TV. Now here's another weird pair I made. These are super soft though. This is that. It's, they're kind of ugly. I kept them because they were ugly, obviously. These are ones that didn't sell. I like ones that cover the wrist a bit. Um, and these have a little, looks like I did a little bit of thumb coverage just around. If you're not, if you're not careful, you can end up with a smitten that has a big opening where your thumb doesn't get any warmth. And uh, arthritic thumbs need a little help. So sometimes I do ones that have a little bit of thumb coverage. So there's oh tricky just came in settle down tricky so there's two and then um i'm also going to post pictures here of other ones i've made over the years i crocheted mostly crocheted these because it was faster for years at the farmer's market and sold dozens and dozens of them um they were quite popular and then i kind of got tired of making them then i also stopped crocheting because crocheting hurt my thumbs um, hurt my arthritis, so I started knitting, and it's a little more time consuming to knit these, and so I kind of stopped making them as much. Um, but I thought, you know, I'll just, I wanted something short to knit on. And um, you'll see in these pictures that some of them are quite long and chunky and nearly cover up all the fingers, and some are very short and almost just decorative. And you can make them however you want to make them. Okay, the smittens I worked on last night that I'm going to show you and give you the little pattern, or if you want to call it that, I'm making these with this Lion brand, is that right? Yeah, Heartland. This is an acrylic yarn, size four, pretty standard. It's got some nice color going on in there, different colors of blue, teal, little black. So it's got a little bit of interest in there. Um, I got this at the thrift store though. It was $1.50 for the whole, I, th I think it was a skein that hadn't been used at all. So that was a good deal. And it doesn't, I mean, I've done both of them and I still got this much left. So these don't take a lot of yarn, which is nice. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the camera around and we'll give a close examination to what I've done so far. And I'll uh, tell you all the different, all the scoop on how to make these and see what you think. Okie dokie. So these are identical. Here's one hand and here's the other. Um, and you do, uh, I'm not really good at counting my rows. I was pretty good at it until I got to the little thumb thing. And then from there up, I had to really compare the two to make sure that they were identical and that I wasn't making one shorter. <laughs> okay, I used 
I like to use circular needles, these bamboo needles. These are a size 10. So size 10 with a number four weight yarn, this is kind of what it gives you, which I think that that looks really good. It's not too open, so it'll keep your hand warm, but it's not so thick um, that it's hard to get on. Okay, so I start at the bottom and I cast on 30 stitches. Now I just use a long tail cast on um, and that seems to work fine. And, the, and I really, I should mention this, leave a nice long tail so that you have this much left over or a good bit because you're going to want to stitch up the side. Um, these are going to be, you, you know, if you crochet, and I think I've knitted them before in the round, um, but with circular needles, you can either use, if you're knitting, you can use double pointed or, you know, fight with your circulars. I just didn't want to do that. I'd rather stitch them up afterward. So that's what I'm going to do. Now this, um, the edge down here, I'm probably going to put a little Pico something down there. I might use this same yarn instead of something contrasting. And you'll notice that it's longer here than it is here. Once you get past the thumb, there's really not a lot of distance, like maybe that much before you get up to your knuckles. And that's not many rows, um, like maybe eight. Okay. Um, so I cast on 30. And then this is, before you do the increase for the thumbs, um, which is not hard at all, this is 20 rows of stockinette stitch, which of course is knit on the front and purl on the back. Um, so 20 rows here, oh, 20 rows here, six rows here, and then finish it off. And you finish it off however you like it. If you want it to be fairly short on your fingers or um, long, you can do it so long that it covers up your pinky. Now what I'm gonna do next, and then I'll leave a tail up there too um, to stitch the top. Now what I'm planning on doing next, of course, is just stitching these up the side and I will leave this open for my thumb to come out, okay? And they will look like this. Isn't that super easy? Yeah, I'm liking that. Let me um, stick my hand in there. Maybe you can get a little feel for how it's gonna be. See, 20 rows gives you lots of coverage down there. Um, now you would think that I'd have to do more increase to really form fit it, but, but a knit like this has some stretch so this will, I'll be able to stretch this over the wide part of my hand. Um, yeah. And this will be, this is a pretty tall one, I think. So there you go. When I get them done, I'll put a picture at the end of them when they're done. Um, and I may put a Pico, little Pico pattern or something like that on the top too. We'll see what I want to do. Um, it does, you know how stockinette stitch tends to do, it tends to roll. Now, I don't mind it so much on the bottom. Sometimes sweaters and stuff actually have a waistband that's um, designed to look like that and have that roll up. But um, it also rolls on the side, but I'll be taking care of that as soon as I stitch it together. Okay, so again, cast on 30 stitches, do 20 rows of stockinette. Um, then on the increase, what I did was I increased one stitch on each of these knit rows only, not the purl rows, for those six rows in here. So that gave me, um, so that's three knit rows, and I increased on each end, um, on, on both of the ends, so that gave me an increase of six stitches total, okay? And um, then when I got done with those six rows, I um, cast off here, and then I cast off on the very next purl row over here on the way back. So they're almost identical in the latitude. Um, and the way that I like to increase is by uh, knitting in the front and then in the back of the stitch and getting basically two stitches out of one. <clears throat> and then when I got back to here, okay, um, I, think I, I think I finished off or cast off five stitches on either side to get back in and then um, I don't know that might be about eight rows of straight stockinette and then cast off so super super easy ladies
Um, and these are fun little Christmas gifts too, or you know Thanksgiving gifts. Um, they're just real versatile because you can use them so much during the year, and they look really cute. And there's just you, you can put um, little fur yarn on the edges, top edges, bottom edges, both edges. You could run a little some kind of a little pattern in there. This is the most simple, but you can do all kinds of things. Uh, you might have noticed that one picture where I did cabling. Um, and all that kind of stuff. Those, yeah, it's it's so fun to do um, all kinds of stuff and put ribbon in it. So um, be creative and see what you think about this. Well, let's finish up these smittens. Now, this is um, the first one I've finished up with a little bit of a border on the bottom. Tell you that window behind me is not going to cooperate. Is it? There we go. <laughs> Put it under my nose. Um, I decided against a pico border, and instead I just did a really simple kind of seashell pattern. So we'll do the other ones, uh, other one, and then um, I'll show you what they look like when I put them on. But we'll go ahead and uh, if if you already know how to crochet really well, this will put you straight to sleep. But um, if you don't, this might be a fun thing to watch. Now remember, I cast on thirty. And each one of these little seashells is going to take up three stitches, so I should have about ten of them all the way around. Okay, so I'm going to start where the seam is, below the thumb. So it would be here on the inside, and so it seems to be a bit more hidden. And I just stick, kind of pick the first little opening there, stick my hook through. This is a size G hook. So kind of in between, not teeny, but not real big. And I'm gonna leave this tail and kind of work it in as I go along, okay? So in that first little hole, I'm gonna count this as my first stitch. Then I'm gonna do um, a double crochet. Now if you don't know how to do single or double crochet, you might wanna go find another little thing to teach you that. And then a single crochet. So I've got three in that hole, okay? So it's basically a little bump. And then I want to, then I want to skip one, two, and go into the third one. Now, if you're wondering why I do that, it's because in each one of these shells, I've got three stitches, a single, a double, and a single. And that means that on either side, of each one of these stitches, of each one, I need to leave an empty one or else I'm going to be increasing uh, my number of stitches. So if on either side of each one of these shells I need to leave a space, that means between two shells I need to leave two spaces. I hope that makes sense. So I just did a single, a double, and now I'll do another single. Okay, and that's what one looks like. Okay. So now I'll skip two stitches, two little bumps there, keeping my tail behind for the last time, and I'll do a single, run over and do a double, and do a single, and I'll go back and cut that tail off later. And then I'm going to skip two, boom, boom, and just keep on going. Now this doesn't give much of a shell. It's a very gentle undulation of yarn at the border down here. Um, we'll look at this and you can see. See what I mean? I just, I didn't want anything too overwhelming because these are kind of simple smittens. You know, they're not real fancy. I do love the yarn. It's pretty neat. Um.
and get this finished that one and you see the first one that I did and so now I'm gonna stick my hook through the original hole and then I yarned over it and I'm going to pull it through the stitch that I'm on. Okay. And then I'll grab the yarn, snip it off. Those are getting dull. Pull it through. It gives a pretty nice edge there. And then I will just um, pull this yarn through some of these stitches that are down below in the smitten. Um, so I've already knotted it off, but that way it'll be hidden in the work. And you don't have a loose end sticking out there, which I really don't like seeing any loose ends. Usually I take it pretty far down into the glove or the hat or whatever I'm working on. things are just awful. There we go. I think they're intended for uh, thread. Okay. People always try to put these on upside down. Aren't those cute though? I'm real pleased. They're exactly the same length. They all, that means they're reversible. You don't have to try to get them hand to hand. Okay, I'll probably be making a lot of these this fall because I kind of miss knitting on the couch at night. I really do. So I'll be doing that. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. Try yourself a pair. Make some for Christmas for people. They're super great gifts. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. snuggling underneath my desk in my studio. It's so sweet. And there you are. Look at his little paws. He's been playing with my socks. And now he's taking a snack.